So this segment is a reading series, and Jan and I bashed our heads together, came up with the perfect name. We are calling this Some of Sam's Summaries. I wanted Samograms. What this is, is we're just going to look at some dingbat article, or maybe even some good book, and talk about it and riff on it and come up with sketches that emerge from the material. Disclaimer, only Sam has read any of this material. Today's article is from The Economist, and it's called What Companies Can Learn From Comedians. So Janet, did you know more and more students who are managers, marketers, and a host of other corporate types are taking comedy classes at the Second City? I am surprised to hear that, Sam. It is apparently to boost employees' soft skills. Okay, so what are the soft skills that we're talking about? There's like confidence, public speaking. Arrogance, overconfidence, uh, talking over women. Yeah, perfect. All the things that made me leave the comedy scene in the first place. Now, Second City apparently have worked with software companies in particular to develop engineers' socialization. But I really love that the companies that automate our lives are completely socially inept. Like, isn't that concerning? So I think we all assume that that is the case in the first place. So I guess it's heartening that they're actually trying to do something about it. I would suggest that introducing engineers to comedians isn't the best way to make them understand how normal people function. Oh, you don't think comedians and improvisers are among the most well-adjusted people you've ever had the fortune to encounter? If you want to teach an engineer to like humanity and relate to it, maybe they could talk to like school teachers. librarians. People, oh, I don't know, at food banks and actually trying to make the world a better place. I'm just going to put this out there instead of the folks trying to trip over each other to make the best dick joke in the class. What are they going to get out of their comedy classes, do you think? Like, without cynicism. Well, according to the article, yes and improves lateral thinking. So I'm quoting here, improv classes are supposed to be safe spaces for frank, even awkward conversations where people feel fewer inhibitions to say stupid things that may just yield something useful. Some employees, particularly in, say, tech companies, do need to feel that liberation to say what's on their mind and speak up. They do need that space. Uh, Others maybe don't. Well, Janet, you'll be uh, pleased to know that companies from Motorola and McDonald's to Nike and Nissan, I quote, believe that sending executives to comedy classes can help them get better at their day job. So yes, the the CEO of McDonald's is the one who needs to learn how to stand up and express himself. This is a safe space, Janet. Can you imagine if like the annual corporate pep rally involves like the executives doing an improv scene. And it's not just improv. Apparently Second City worked on a marketing campaign with Leggett and Pratt, a mattress spring company from Missouri. Now, I hadn't heard anything about this company before, so I just went ahead and brought up their glass door reviews. Uh, among the cons, apparently, quote, favoritism runs rampant with upper management. They will make sure you will not learn anything. Just- <laughs> pretty severe. (laughs) Follow you around making sure you didn't learn anything, did you? (laughs) Oh, here's one. Uh, Cons. Reverse racism, anti-white and sexual discrimination. So that's a senior quality engineer uh, giving, I'm going to say his perspective on some of the problems plaguing Leggett and Pratt, which makes me wonder what it must have been like to work with this person. Anyway, so uh, this is a 410 word article saying pretty much literally nothing. And by the way, it ran in their print magazine. I don't know what sort of editorial controls they've got in place over there at The Economist, but this is after all the magazine as celebrated in articles like The Atlantic's, The Economist is sorry about its not all slave masters book review. Uh Uh-oh. And the nation's The Economist has a slavery problem. Is this an ongoing problem that they have, Sam? They might need to clamp down a bit more on their writers. Well, okay, take the two reviews in question, both from 2014. There was slavery, not black and white. So uh, that review included the line, Unfortunately, the horror in Mr. Greg Grandin's history are unrelenting is, is a book without heroes. There are good people on both sides, aren't there? The review Blood Cotton included lines like, Mr. Edward Baptist has not written an objective history of slavery. Almost all the blacks in his book are victims, almost all the whites villains. This is not history, it is advocacy. My jaw hit the floor when you said that, Sam. So let's just say The Economist might have a problem with its reviews and analysis. That's centrism for you. Let's look into this. Why don't we take a look into The Economist's book club. 